Ever since I was a child, looking at marine life on a rocky shore has been one of my favourite pastimes. At low water, you get a peek at an array of organisms, giving you an insight into our rich and diverse sea life without the need of a snorkel or diving equipment. All that might get wet is your feet. The sea life inhabiting the intertidal zone arrange themselves up the shore, depending on their ability to survive changes in moisture, temperature and salinity, and their ability to withstand strong waves. A typical rocky shore can be divided into different zones based on the amount of exposure to seawater and air. At the top is the spray zone. It is submerged only during very high tides or severe storms, but is dampened by ocean spray and high waves. It is inhabited by life which is adapted to live on land, but have a high tolerance to salt, such as lichens, the sea bristletail, and algae such as the yellow-brown channel drack. The next zone is the high intertidal zone, which floods during the peaks of daily high tides, but remains dry for long stretches between high tides. Here you will find animals such as limpets and brittle stars, and green seaweeds such as sea lettuce. Then comes the middle intertidal zone. In this zone, the tides ebb and flow twice a day. It is inhabited by a greater variety of both plants and animals, including sea stars and anemones, and brown seaweeds such as egg rack and the red seaweed pepper dulse. And finally, there is the low intertidal zone, which is virtually always underwater, except during the lowest spring tides. Here you will find animals such as crabs, sea urchins, shrimps and snails, and brown seaweeds such as bladder rack and knotted rack. So the tides have a huge impact on marine life in the intertidal zone. But what will happen to the zonation on our rocky shores when the tides reach higher and higher up the shoreline, as is happening now, and will continue to happen due to sea level rise as a result of global warming? Global mean sea level has risen about 21 to 24 centimetres since 1880. Satellite data measurements from the past 30 years shows that the current rate of sea level rise is 3.4 millimetres per year and that this rate is expected to accelerate. Sea level has risen and fallen over Earth's geological time. During the peak of the last ice age, which was about 20,000 years ago, sea level was about 120 metres lower than today. Then as the ice age ended and the ice sheets melted, sea level rose at a rate of about 1.2 centimetres per year for 10,000 years until it levelled off at roughly today's position. So our coastlines have changed over vast periods of time. But what is different today is that we humans are here. Approximately 1.9 billion people live within a 10 kilometer band along the shore. And in occupying the coastline, we have changed it to suit our needs, which will make it extremely difficult for our coastlines to adapt to the rise in sea level. So exactly how the rocky shore responds to this change in water level will very much depend on where the rocky shore is. It could be that the rocky shore is able to migrate inland, but the majority of rocky shores globally are backed by steep cliffs or anthropogenic structures, and so are expected to experience coastal squeeze, where there will be a narrowing of the intertidal zone. It is unclear if the characteristics of the changing intertidal zone, such as slope, substrate type, and physical environmental conditions, such as wave stress and exposure, will be suitable for colonisation by intertidal species. So what will become of the wildlife that lives in the intertidal zone? Will they be able to adapt to this rise in sea level and coastal squeeze, or will some organisms die off? To answer this question, a study was carried out at four sites by scientists from the Scripps Institute found in San Diego, California. The percentage cover of dominant benthic species and the density of sessile and mobile invertebrates were calculated using in situ imaging. The current intertidal area was mapped using a remote sensing technique called LIDAR. A model was then used to investigate the changes in total habitat extent at different possible sea level rises, and the consequential changes in the extent of the dominant benthic species 
and the density of the invertebrates. In the model, sea level rise scenarios ranging from 0.1 to 2 metres were used with results being analysed in 10 centimetre increments. If the observed trend in San Diego were to continue, then there would be a 0.2 metre rise by 2100. If this were the case, then the model predicts almost 30% of the intertidal habitat would be lost across the study sites. At a sea level rise of 1 metre by 2100, it would be 78%, and at 1.7 metres, it would be 85%. Similar predictions have also been made for rocky shore habitats in other areas around the world, including Scotland, New South Wales, Australia and Eastern Australia. In the study conducted by the Scripps Institute, habitat loss was found to be the greatest for the lower and middle intertidal zones, which currently occupy a broad and gently sloping intertidal shelf, which will rapidly become subtidal. It is expected that the proportional contribution of each zone to total intertidal area will shift, with the contribution of the lower intertidal zone diminishing, and that of the middle and upper zone increasing. All sea level scenarios resulted in reductions in the extent of the dominant benthic species, particularly those that occupy the lower and middle intertidal habitats, such as articulated coralline algae, some brown algae, red algae, and sea grasses. While species will be different in California to those found on our rocky shores, we also have coralline algae, brown and red algae, and sea grass. So it is likely that these organisms will react in a similar way to those studied in California. The magnitude of the reductions in these benthic organisms will be different for different species, which will result in changes in community structure as the relative abundance of species shifts. When it comes to the invertebrates that were found at the four sites, the results from the model show that the total abundance of all the invertebrates will decrease by around 56% at a sea level rise of 1 metre and 67% at 1.7 metres. The extent is expected to change a little less dramatically for taxa occupying primarily the upper intertidal habitat, such as mussels and barnacles. For example, it is estimated that the total extent of barnacles will decrease by an average of 53% across all study sites at a sea level rise of 1 metre. For those occupying the low intertidal zone, such as green anemones, the loss will be much greater with an average of 64% at a sea level rise of 0.5 metres and 76% at a sea level rise of 1 metre. These numbers show that there will be a huge loss of rocky shore habitat and consequently the number of organisms will reduce. This loss of habitat will not only affect our rocky shores, but also other marine coastal habitats such as coral reefs, mangroves, mudflats and salt marshes. Habitat loss is among the greatest threats to global biodiversity. It is of vital importance that the current state of these intertidal ecosystems is evaluated and to then assess how sea level rise may affect these important communities in the coming years. The Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust do many amazing things to help protect and raise awareness of the rich diversity of our local marine environment. One of the things that you can take part in is intertidal surveys. These are really great fun and there are many dates available throughout the summer months. Just look at their website to find out more. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.